I've made one of these update videos each rotation for the last two years to help bring you guys watching along at home, along on my postgraduate medical training journey as I work through the foundation program. Hi, welcome back to the channel. My name is Ollie. I'm an academic foundation year two doctor working as part of the NHS in England. So a really quick catch up that we have to do at the beginning of all of these for those who do not know, the foundation program is a two year rotational program that all UK medical graduates must go through after they graduate. So that's after your four to six years of undergraduate medical training as a medical student, you then graduate, become a working doctor and must complete this two year postgraduate training program. It's made up of six different four month long posts, which you take over two years. And the idea is that you rotate very generally and broadly through different specialties in medicine and surgery. Everyone has a slightly different combination of specialties to get you ready to enter specialty training or residency as it's often called in other countries. It's not just the day job, but it includes nights, weekends and on calls as well. So that's plenty of out of hours, less supervised work where you're working much more independently. And all of us as part of this process will become what's called ALS providers or advanced life support providers. Meaning that we are trained to lead an emergency scenario for that first time critical couple of minutes until senior help arrives. And I'm very rapidly reaching the end of this journey. I'm now in my final rotation of the foundation program and I'm due to finish it all going well in August. So that's it really. In a couple of months, I will be deemed fit and ready to enter specialty training, should I so wish. So what am I actually doing at the moment? Well, the answer to that is psychiatry. I've had a very cerebral second year of the foundation program with my rotations, firstly being in neurology when I started F2, followed by an academic research block, followed by this block in psychiatry. Now psychiatry is the medical specialty that deals with disorders of the mind. And just because I think it's one of the specialties that people don't fully understand because they won't often come into contact with it, psychiatry, so disorders of the mind, is a separate medical specialty from neurology, which is much more to do with organic disorders of the brain, and psychology, which is a very different modality of training and approach to dealing with these problems and helping patients overcome or come to terms with these problems. They're kind of two different schools of thought in trying to help these patients. So what's different? What's interesting about this job? Lots of you will know this already, but psychiatry is much more about talking and really much more about listening than it is about doing anything else with patients. Patients tell us basically what's going on with them. We listen to them and then we work together with them to come up with a treatment plan and help them to get better or improve their situation. And one of the really major differences is that the interventions we make can often be quite slow, unlike in medicine or surgery, more acute environments where people will be fixed quite quickly with an operation or with a tablet. In psychiatry, the changes that we make can take weeks, months, years to help a patient get back to where they want to be. And of course, when we make these changes for patients, for example, if we start them on an antipsychotic treatment, we are less led by clinical examination and blood tests, for example, and scans, and much more by behavior and presentation. What do we actually see? How is the patient feeling? These are the markers by which progress and changes are tracked rather than the more sort of organic things that we tend to focus on in hospital medicine. And perhaps because of that, the second really major difference that I've noticed is that it's a much more MDT driven specialty. MDT meaning multidisciplinary team there, because in my previous jobs, for very many reasons, I found that the individual parts of the MDT can be quite siloed in hospital medicine. So that would mean that the doctors get involved and do their bit. The physiotherapists might get involved, see the patient and do their bit. And then the occupational therapists might do their bit. And there's quite rarely direct communication and meetings between all of these different groups. But in psychiatry, you have many more meetings where there are representatives from all of these different groups present at the same time. And I think, again, this comes down to because we're driven by presentation, mood, feeling, behavior. And especially since as doctors, we don't spend extended periods of time with our patients. I might see each patient for an extended period of time, maybe only once a week. We're really reliant on 
what other staff members are seeing when they're interacting with them, when they're on leave, when they're outside the hospital, when they're working with different groups and different patients. We need all of that information feeding back to help guide the overall plan. And then the third element, and this is probably quite obvious to those of you that have ever worked in or around mental health, but for better or worse, we are sometimes dealing with patients who are being detained and treated against their will. Some patients are genuinely so unwell that they need to be kept in hospital for assessment and potentially treatment such that they don't present a risk to themselves or to other people. And I've actually been quite lucky to spend some time as part of my SHO role with the registrars overnight when they go out and see people who might be acutely psychotic. Presenting for the first time, they get taken to what's called a place of safety where they can be assessed and a decision ultimately needs to be made. Are they going to be taken to hospital for assessment and potentially treatment? Or, or do they simply go home? These are really, really complicated and challenging decisions, but being able to observe those as they happen and that actually being part of my job, go and observe those, that's been really eye-opening. But my core role as a psychiatry SHO on the ward is, as ever, basically keeping the patients alive day to day as it is on any kind of hospital ward, such that the specialists, those being the registrars, the consultants can do their job. We deal with the general day to day general medicine stuff. And this does mean that we are first port of call for any of the general medicine issues that pop up. And we do have to operate with a sort of GP uh, type mentality where we have limited resources in what is really an out of hospital setting and decide if it's something that we can manage with the limited resources that we have here or we have to send the patient into hospital. We don't have easy access to blood tests with rapid turnaround for example. We can't set up IV drips or give intravenous medication. We don't have blood gas machines. All of those things that I've become used to being very immediately available, my big shiny tertiary center, aren't here. So you have to do a bit more clinical reasoning and risk management and deciding whether this is something you can sort by yourself or not. During the daytime I'm attached to the same adult ward day in and day out so I am used to a particular cohort of patients but when I'm on call at night I cover a much wider area so several hospitals within the region in which I work and I also cover paediatric psych services at night as well. And this is very new to me, kids haven't ever been a routine part of my caseload as a doctor since I graduated graduated and that's been a really enjoyable part of the process. I do really enjoy working with kids. I would like it to be part of my later career. I am also in quite an unusual position in the academic work, despite this not being an academic rotation, is still something that I'm very heavily involved with and that's basically down to my supervisor who is also an academic and gets all of the academic foundation doctors on this rotation. So I'm very grateful that he's gotten me involved in research projects that are going on within the unit. It is an academic psychiatry unit and there's plenty going on. And the big major project for me has been getting involved in clinical trials work and for those of you who again don't know, clinical trials are typically where you're trialing out new medications, new treatments, to help patients with various types of problem. And they are one of the really major types of clinical research that goes on at quite a high level because obviously these are about introducing new interventions and treatments on a large scale. And given that I've not done this before, that means I've been allowed to train up in kind of the running of clinical trials, recruitment of participants to trials, screening, randomization, all of these really important steps, and all of the information governance, database type stuff that you need to run these studies. And although I don't want to proceed into a career in psychiatry, I can take those skills and training and apply them to any specialty in medicine where clinical trials take place. And actually credit to him, my supervisor has been very clear that I should be trying to combine my academic interests with the day-to-day -day SHO job that I do on the ward. And that's not something you usually get. You know, usually your line manager, your supervisor's position is you're here to do the job that I pay you to do, so do it. He's been quite clear that actually, no, this other stuff is very important as well. So get away from the ward when you can, isolate yourself, do plenty of the academic work that we're giving you to do, do stuff that interests you, and you're very welcome to take your extracurricular stuff. So the stuff that I'm doing in neurosurgery and uh, epilepsy service evaluation work, 
totally happy for me to do that during the day as well. The training that I've been receiving on this job has also been really good and I'm grateful for this because psychiatry is an area of my medical school clinical rotations that really got disrupted by COVID so I lost out on a lot of experience when everything locked down. And I've also quite shamefully discovered that there is a really big difference between what you were taught at the medical school level in psychiatry in terms of how to take a psychiatric history and how to do a mental state assessment. These things that you learn to pass your exams, that's very different to what is actually being done in practice. And I had a really good feedback session with one of the consultants the other day where he essentially dissected line by line my entire psychiatric history that I did with a patient and basically went, this is why this is a bad question. This is why you worded this wrongly. This is what you can do better next time. But you really do need that dedicated time with a patient supervisor who can take notes on what you're doing, let you lead the interview and then basically give you that line by line detailed feedback to help you do better next time. It's very apprentice like, you know, you've got someone correcting your technique at every stage so then you can benefit from their decades of wisdom that they've amassed in their career. So to wrap things up and bring this video to an end, what comes next? What happens after I finish the foundation program? Basically, I've got a very, very cool and exciting job coming up next, but come August, I will actually be working in London for the first time, believe it or not. That's not, that's not really something I expected to happen, especially this early relatively in my career, but I will be living the expensive dream working in central London in a big shiny London hospital. <laughs> and of course that means that I'm not going straight into specialty training. I am taking the F3 year, um, the experience that, that now more people do than don't, essentially to do a year of neurosurgery in an academic neurosurgical center and build myself up to become more competitive for the time when I decide to apply for training. So thank you very much for watching guys. Please be sure to hit that like button for me, leave a comment, subscribe, and don't forget to go and check out my website, ollieburton.com. If you've got any questions about being a foundation doctor, there's lots of you joining the NHS in August or working in psychiatry as an SHO, for example, let me know down below. Take care and I'll see you next time.